have five frames a second. Um, it is an amazing piece of computing. Um, you know, a terabyte of power feeding into just something that would be the top of the line for the computer for a decade ago. It is absolutely beautiful. I, I still use this when I'm talking to people as the example of getting so much power out of the computer. Now, this is an example of, of a, a class of, of um, simulations, time by simulations. Right. This is, a, this is a, an end body simulation where the gravity between all of these different bodies is being modeled, and this particular algorithm interacts every body with every other single body. It's an n squared algorithm. Everything is interacting with every, everything else. That's right. And we compute it um, one frame at a time, and we do it so fast that we're able to do a million particles per second. And we see, of course, this galaxy now in motion. So this is 20,000 particles, but because it's n squared, that's 400 million interactions at each image. It's wow. an enormous amount of computing. Wow, that's something else. OK, well, that's probably That's all very impressive. And, um, and we surely admire the work that we've done in the past. But What's the big deal now? Let's, let's see. Let's see Kepler. Let's see Kepler. <laughs> right. So this is. All right. What are we looking at here? This is a whole step up. This is instead of twenty thousand bodies, two hundred eighty thousand bodies. We're modeling it with the bonsai um, multipole code out of the observatory of Leiden. And in collaboration with Harun Bedorf and Denny um, Gabarov, we have had so much success in taking this code and applying all of these amazing type of things to it. Now, I, rec I recognize this. this I, I see this. What, where are we right now? Tell so, us in, in the, in the, on the vast left. of space. On, on, on the lower left, we have the Milky Way. And on the upper right, we have the Andromeda Galaxy. The, uh, the year is up in the top left-hand corner. It's about 3.8 billion years in the future. So we simulated just for now. We simulated from present day to 3.8 billion years from now. So this is not a time machine. I don't. I don't know what it is. Right. This, this is a perfect example of a time machine. And and we we reached the moment where really interesting stuff starts to happen. The Andromeda galaxy is heading towards us and. We are going to end up most, if not the first pass, but uh, later on. So this code is based on a thing called a tree code, where instead of interacting every body with every other body, we create this tree hierarchy of interactions. And we can see the hierarchy right here. This, this grid that you see is showing, with ever-increasing intensity, where we are focusing the compute power. And so each box is bracketing about 16 stars, and out of 280,000 stars, that makes an enormous number of boxes. And so we are using the dynamic parallelism that you just talked about to very efficiently prune out these boxes and generate this tree structure in a way that would not have been possible before. And you can see these beautiful swirls of stars just being flung around. There's a 50-50 chance the sun's going to be out there in front of those just flung out of the galaxies. Well, so in three and a half billion years, um, we are going to collide with Andromeda. That's right. Um, it will sweep past this, tear these stars away, and come back for a little while. So, so I, I guess the, the advice to the audience is to put our personal matters in, in order. <laughs> because in three and a half billion years, we, get, we, might, we might end up in a different galaxy. Yeah. Now you know what's coming. So, you know, watch out, guys. Get your head over it. Now, one of the things that, that's really curious is, is um, to me is uh, all these stars and all these, well, all these stars, uh, on the outer fringes of the galaxy don't seem to be moving nearly as slowly as I would have expected. I mean, in, in the center where, where there's greater mass, um, I would have expected that the, the planets and the, gal and the stars would be rotating much more quickly and outside much more slowly. But why, why am I not seeing that? There's something wrong with the simulation. Um, so you actually hit one of the great mysteries of astronomy. Um, Based on exactly these kinds of simulations and on observations of stars, they realize that the stars in our galaxy and every galaxy we can see are going way, way too fast. And without a good explanation for what this was, without good computer models to show it, they, were, they spent about 50, 60 years trying to figure out. And finally, in models approximately this size that we can now do in real time, 
um, they figure out that there is, in fact, only 10% of matter in the galaxy is visible to us, and 90% of it is invisible dark matter that lives in a big halo around the outside of the galaxy, holding it together and driving that inner illuminated world. Ladies and gentlemen, we've identified dark matter. I think someone ought to issue a paper, a medical paper, quick. <laughs> Real time. Oh, this is fantastic. So, so uh, your, par your parents, just seriously, are, are astrophysicists, and, and they, are, they are obviously going to be incredibly proud of what they've done. Now, what, what are the, why, do they, why do they care what happens two and a half billion years from now? Well, I think first and foremost, it's fascinating. It's beautiful to see. Uh -huh. um, and in addition, the uh, the laws of physics that apply at these intergalactic scales apply right down to the molecular scale as well. So this exact multipole algorithm that we are using here to simulate galaxies, we can use to simulate proteins and molecular dynamics at the tiny nanoscale. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the laws of physics, they spread, they're equal for everywhere except quantum mechanics, if nobody understands. And it's, uh, equal, the, the simulations we see here apply directly to our day-to-day -day life. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Well, that's really, really terrific work. Good job, you guys. What a great time.